and I can be in chase by a rattlesnake. Wow! All right, welcome out to the Stinking Springs Trailhead. I'm gonna ride Sidewinder and Upper Stinking Springs today. So if you're coming here, you'll notice the Stinking Springs Trailhead. There's a parking lot right here. And then the trailhead's actually on this side. And I'll show you that gate right here real quick. You'll notice a lot of cars in the parking lot. A lot of them are for dirt bikes and ATVs. So that gives you an idea of the type of trail users you're probably gonna see out here on certain parts of the trail. If you're mountain biking, you're gonna come up to this gate. And actually the Stinking Springs Trail is just over there. That is more conducive to dirt bikers and that sort of thing. The skate can be a bit awkward by yourself, but it's doable. And now this is Sidewinder. So a lot of people get confused. Some people call the entire trail Stinking Springs. Others call the entire thing Sidewinder. Um, Sidewinder is actually just this single track section here at the bottom. I'll show you where it ends and then we'll move on to Upper Stinking Springs from there. So let's go. So this is the top of the Sidewinder Trail and this is the bottom of the Upper Stinking Springs Trail. So if you guys look up there on top of that ridge, follow that up, that's where Upper Stinking Springs goes. Um, bit of an issue though that I'm having this ride is actually it's been raining for about a week and while these are probably some of the driest trails in the area um, even Sidewinder really wasn't bad but it was starting to get pretty muddy towards the top um, not enough that I think it would damage the trail but um, definitely muddier than I think I've ever seen it and the bottom of Stinking Springs is looking pretty similar so I may ride up just a little ways just to see. So this is the top of the single track. Uh, if you come down Stinging Springs, you'll see this fence. Um, if you continue down that way, that is Lower Stinging Springs, which is almost, almost exclusive to dirt bikes. Uh, mountain bikers ride it occasionally, but it's, it's pretty uncommon to do it that way. So we're gonna go check this out. Taking this pretty easy because it's quite greasy. Um, but it's not too, too bad. It's not too steep through here, but it was just getting more and more muddy. So I decided it probably wasn't what I wanted to be doing. Loving that. Hoping we don't get too much mud on the camera. <laughs> These switchbacks can be a lot of fun. Really gotta watch them in bad conditions though. grip is actually pretty good. I was really getting a little bit concerned as my back tire would slide going up, but you know, not bad. But it was getting a lot worse, so I decided to make the call. Let's 
So at the bottom of this trail, I thought that I could probably make a a run for a PR or something because the conditions just look so good. But unfortunately, they just kind of deteriorated deteriorated up here. And so I'm going to be taking it easy through the muddy sections. But this is about as good as it gets, just slightly on the too wet side of, of Austin. This trail is normally very dusty, can be pretty loose. Um, not in a real dangerous way necessarily, but it can be hard to get around some of those corners when it's super dry, at least at speed. So always a good ride, but the conditions do vary. That said, it's one of the most consistent trails in this area because it handles water very, very well. So there's been a lot of rain and the other trails are looking really bad. There's a good chance that these trails out here are completely fine. Ooh. is that it's pretty narrow. That's about the one thing that I think throws me off the most, being able to commit to going fast on it. It's just that it really hangs off a cliff in these spots. And I struggle with that. <laughs> But these conditions are fast. But I'm a bit of a chicken when it comes to speed, so. All right, this is one we're gonna really slow up for. Because we need to go through it. As you can see, Sidewinder is not very technical. Those were the biggest rocks on the trail. The most technical part is all these corners, which I kind of sick of doing. <laughs> you really got to watch for them. Some are gentle and some are really tight. They're all burned pretty well, so you can get a really good flow going through them. But, yeah. Very easy to blow a corner on this trail. Man, this pipe looks like pump as well. the scariest parts for me. And like I say, some of these corners are tight.
my legs are tired. Because of the mud, I haven't put up my dropper post at all. Two in there. So you gotta watch it. Chased by a rattlesnake. Whoa. Woo So let's talk bikes on Sidewinder. So <clears throat> there's really not much to say. I would recommend bringing a mountain bike. And I say that because you really don't have to. You could definitely ride it on a cross bike, even a road bike if you're really motivated. Um, Sidewinder can be ridden on pretty much anything, but it's a lot more fun on a bike that's agile um, and, and nimble and stable as well. So I would recommend a mountain bike. I've ridden it on hardtails. I've ridden it on this thing. I think this might be the most fun bike I've ridden it on, um, but everything from the Superfly to the Stash, the Jekyll, um, I think every mountain bike I've owned in the last 10 years has been on that trail and they've all done just fine. Upper Stingin' Springs is another story. We'll get to that in another video. You could take a cross bike on that. It would be pretty darn annoying. I would definitely recommend you take a mountain bike up there, but a hardtail, full suspension, whatever you want. So yeah, whatever you got is fine. It's really not that technical. It gets more technical the faster you go, um, but that's entirely up to you. So yeah, that's about all there is to that. We'll catch you later, guys.